Good evening. Will the members and our guests please take their seats? This meeting will now come to order. As all members have received a copy of the call for tonight's meeting, the reading of the call will be omitted. Will everyone please rise and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the April meeting of the Greenwich Representative Town Meeting. My name is Tom Byrne, RTM moderator. As all members have received a copy of the minutes of our March 14 meeting, the reading of those minutes will be omitted. Are there any suggested changes to those minutes? Hearing none, the minutes as submitted stand adopted upon unanimous consent. All right, uh, Lucia Jansen, Chair of our Budget Overview Committee. Michael Warner, Chair of our Finance Committee. No, okay. All right, that then brings us to the call for tonight's meeting. I informed our uh, district and committee chairs that based upon the reports received, I would recommend that we place on the consent calendar items one, two, three, six, and eight, that we combine for voting purposes items four and nine, item five has been withdrawn, and that would leave to consider separately items seven, 10, 11, and 12. So at this point, I will designate the following five items for our consent calendar. And if they remain on that calendar, uh, what you hear now will be all that uh, we hear tonight as we do not take committee reports or have discussion on consent calendar items. So item number one is a resolution to appoint Julia Chiapetta to be a regular member of the Board of Health for a term expiring March 31, 2020. Item two is a resolution appointing John Hartwell to be a regular member of the Board of Parks and Recreation for a term expiring March 31, 2019. Item three is a resolution appointing Patricia Kirkpac Kirkpatrick to be a regular member of the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals for a term expiring March 31, 2020. Item six is a resolution appointing Carol Burns to be a regular member of the Commission on Aging for a term expiring March 31, 2019. And item eight is a resolution appointing William Galvin to be a member of the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses One Word Agency for a term expiring March 31, 2020. Is there any objection to the designation of those five items for our consent calendar? Hearing none, will the district chairs please mark your voting cards. Consent calendar items, one, two, three, six, and eight, and proceed to pull your delegation. All right, next up are uh, items four and nine to be combined for voting purposes. That requires a motion to suspend the rules. Is there such a motion to suspend the rules and combine items four and nine for voting purposes? It has been moved and seconded to combine items four and nine for voting purposes. The motion to suspend the rules is not debatable and requires a two-thirds majority to pass. All those in favor of suspending the rules and combining items four and nine for voting purposes, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That motion has carried. All right, so we will begin with item number four, which was postponed from our March meeting. Uh, so that is a resolution appointing Wayne Sullivan to be a regular member of the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals for a term expiring March 31, 2020. That resolution is now before us. May we have the reports of the, con of the committees that consider this. Beginning with our appointments committee and its chair, John Eddy. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, members of the RTM. Uh, the Appointments Committee met to uh, take up the question of the reappointment of Mr. Wayne Sullivan. Um, 
Uh, Mr. Sullivan is a uh, person who's being elevated from an, a, an alternate member to a regular member. Uh, he, uh, we questioned him on uh, a number of issues with respect to the operation of the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, when questioned regarding why he changed the, uh, I'm sorry, when questioned, uh, I have to be honest with you, I thought that land use would go first and I could just. <laughs> oh, we, I, we can do that. Is just Mr. Berg available? I just agree with Mr. Berg, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Let's see. Um, Mr. Uh, Sullivan uh, made a distinction between um, saying no and addressing specifically stated problems when he was questioned on the issue of how a lawsuit will, uh, might affect the decisions of the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals. This was uh, specifically in relation to the, uh, the, the, the change of vote that the, uh, plan, that the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals made with respect to the uh, the Greenwich Reform Synagogue in um, in Coscop. Uh, he said that the uh, the distinction between saying no, th there's a distinction between saying no and ad addressing specifically stated items. So when they made their change, it was his understanding at the time that uh, the uh, the objections were not to the synagogue, but were to specific issues with respect to the synagogue. And once those specific issues were addressed. Uh, he felt he could uh, vote, or any member of the uh, Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals uh, could vote in favor of the item. Uh, these were questions that were basically trying to give us an insight into how the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals worked. Um, when questioned about the high number of um, uh, approvals that the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals gives to variances, he uh, was very helpful in pointing out that uh, a large majority of the variances that they vote upon have already been vetted and talked about and the attorneys uh, uh, understand what the issues are. So by the time a variance comes before the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, it's basically been vetted and the issues have been uh, ironed out. Um, the vote on Mr. Sullivan was 10 0, zero in favor uh, of recommending his uh, nomination. Districts 1 and 9 were absent. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have the report from our land use committee? Mr. Carter, are you able to fill in by any chance? Michael Carter, Vice Chair of our Land Use Committee. Uh, Mr. Berg, uh, Mr. Carter is filling in for you uh, at the moment. Peter, <laughs> just in time. Too late, actually. <laughs> and our May meeting is going to start at 7. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. Good evening. So um, the Land Use Committee interviewed Mr. Sullivan back in March, along with uh, Ms. Kirk Kirkpatrick, Item 3, and uh, Mr. Sir Tillman, Item 5. So these were all reappointments. Uh, these these uh, individuals have all been serving on, on the uh, wetlands. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the... Uh, Planning and uh, Zoning Board of Appeals for at least one term. Um, we found Mr. Sullivan to be a very good candidate. Uh, so our vote on uh, our vote on item four was 12 zero zero. Thank you. Discussion on item four. Item nine now comes before us. Peter Tessie, our first selectman. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen of the RTM. Resolved that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed as a regular member of the Nathaniel Witherell Board for a term expiring 3 31 19. Elizabeth Siderides Theophanidis. Now, you know, I usually say, will a member please move the resolution, but since you are an ex officio member, you may move so moved. the resolution. <laughs> Is there. The resolution on item nine has been moved and seconded. 
May we have the reports of the committees that consider this? Mr. Galvin with our Health and Human Services report. I understand your chairman might be uh, at a baseball game? Yes. She's Red Sox probably opener. in the rain at the Red Sox game tonight. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator, members of the uh, RTM. Uh, the Health and Human Services Committee met with uh, Dr. Sidorides, uh last Tuesday evening to discuss her nomination to the Nathaniel Witherell Board. Uh, the doctor is an ophthalmologist in practice for 26 years, specializing in eye surgery. She's the managing partner at uh, Stanford Ophthalmology as well as the Wilton Surgery Center. She is the uh, senior member of a five-person practice and they have 20 total employees. Uh, she noted that uh, as a partner in a medical practice, she's acutely aware of the medical economics of running a successful practice, balancing the goal of providing excellent patient care, uh, while at the same time managing the diminishing reimbursements from the insurance industry. Since many of her patients are elderly, she is familiar with the problems facing the elderly, dementia, increased medical needs, uh, transitioning to assisted living or nursing, nursing homes. Uh, Dr. Siderides was asked how, in her own practice, she has managed to cut costs and improve revenue. Uh, that was a question, obviously, uh, on the, our minds, uh, thinking about Nathaniel Witherell and its future. Uh, she answered that she identified ways to optimize her employees' schedules, shifting from full-time to part-time when possible, as well as incorporating an optical shop in her practice, which allowed patients to purchase contact lenses and glasses directly versus going to other third parties. She acknowledged that she still has a lot to learn about the overall financial health of Witherell, but that employee costs and related benefits uh, would be uh, one area uh, that she would initially study to determine if there is some way to generate cost savings. She also suggested that working directly with local orthopedic practices to smooth out the admissions and the discharge cycles could help manage the variable nature of the client census, which ultimately impacts re revenue. Uh, Health and Human Services voted 11 0, -0 uh, for the nomination of Dr. Siderides to the board of uh, Nathaniel Witherell. Uh, District 10 was absent. Thank you. Thank you. John Eddy with the report of our appointments committee. Thank you. Uh, I don't have much to add except that um, uh, Dr. Sederiz suggested that the uh, Nathaniel Wisrol is a very valuable community asset and she does not assume that it cannot both thrive and be run at a profit to the benefit of the town. Uh, the appointments committee vote was 11 0, 0 in favor of Dr. Sederiz. Thank, Thank you. Discussion on item nine. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards, combined items four and nine, and proceed to pull your delegation. We will continue with the four separate items remaining. Item seven now comes before us. John Eddy. Resolved that the following named person nominated by the appointments committee be appointed RTM ex officio non-voting member to the Harbor Management Commission for a term expiring 12 3117, Mr. Horst Tebe. Thank you. That resolution being offered on behalf of one of our committees. It does not require a second and is now before us. May we have the reports? Mr. Eddy? Thank you. I have the report from the uh, appointments committee whose job it was to nominate Mr. Tebe. Uh, and it's, uh, I apologize in advance, it's a little bit lengthy, but there's a, there's a story that goes along with this. Um, the, uh, the vote of the appointments committee was 6-3-1, uh, hence the uh, kind of long report. The appointments committee met with Mr. Tebe on 315 to consider his nomination to the RTM ex officio non-voting member of the Harbor Management Commission. Mr. Tebe was the sole candidate being considered for the nomination. Uh, a call for, uh, I don't need to, be, everyone understands that there was a call for, uh, for candidates. Uh, the Harbor Management Commission was created uh, as a background by an act of the RTM in June 2014. Um, in April of 2014, the Harbor Management Commission had its first meeting and was charged with the task of uh, creating a, a Greenwich Harbor plan um, to be approved by the state and then adopted by the RTM. Uh, it was not until June of 2015 that the RTM adopted a method of appointing its non-voting member to the commission and not until September of 2015 that the RTM appointed its first representative to the Harbor Management Commission, which was Mr. and is Mr. Horst Tebe. 
By the time the commission itself had met over 20 times and, a, and held a public hearing, its subcommittees on writing the harbor management plan had met over 15 times and produced a draft harbor management plan as well as an addendum containing revision, revisions. This was the uh, transit of contingencies into which, into which Mr. Tebe stepped and was charged to represent the RTM at the Harbor Management Commission. Um, the Appointments Committee meeting with Mr. Tebe came in the wake of the previous week's meeting on March 8th, where the Appointments Committee was voting to make a recommendation on the two nominees to the Harbor Management Commission, one of whom was a first-time nominee and the other whom was being renominated. Uh, the chair of the Appointments Committee had asked Mr. Tebe if he would provide the committee with an inform informational update on the Harbor Management Commission's charge and progress in, pre in preparation for the Appointments Committee meeting. So uh, this was not really in the job description of, the, uh, uh, of Mr. Tebe, of the, uh, uh, the RTM representative, uh, but uh, the chair, that's me, felt that it would be a, a good precedent to have the uh, RTM rep advised the uh, Appointments Committee in situations like this. Mr. Tebby agreed to both appear before the Appointments Committee and also, at my request, to provide his thoughts in writing. Uh, Mr. Tebby's report was frank and detailed assessment of his limited experience on the Harbor Management Commission. So when the Appointments Committee met with Mr. Tebby uh, to reconsider his, uh, his nomination, the, I'm sorry, to consider his renomination. Mr. Tebe expressed his experience and qualifications, all of which were forwarded to you and you should, uh, you should have. And uh, he emphasized his position um, that he felt on the importance of our marine assets to the quality of life in town, particularly the non-commercial use of the waterfront. Mr. Tebe was questioned about the reported turmoil on the board and responded in detail. He concluded that while there were difficulties on the commission, he also felt that he had a basis for believing that these difficulties could be overcome. He also offered his opinion and supporting reasons uh, with respect to the probability of the harbor management's plan being accepted by the state. Uh, Mr. Tebby received criticism on his previous week's report to the Appointments Committee from three members of the Appointments Commission, uh, the Appointments Committee. The delegate from District 10 expressed concern that the report was not balanced and he felt that there were other points of view that might have been included in his report. The candidate thanked the delegate for his remarks and responded that perhaps he could have done a better job of seeking out and including more points of view and that he would endeavor to do so in the future if reappointed. The delegate from District 3 was more strongly critical of the report and of the candidate, expressing that the, overall, that the report omitted the perspective of particular members, and he felt it was an unfair representation of the commission overall. The delegate from D District 5 was also critical of the report's objectivity and took exception to Mr. Tebe's opinion that certain elements of the harbor management plan would, would, would cause difficulty in having it received favorably at the state level. The non-voting alternate from District 8 criticized Mr. Tebe for his uh, participation on a commission that was not complying with the Freedom of Information Act and for not addressing the Freedom of Information Act violations. The alternate from District 5 expressed concern that the committee uh, was saddling the candidate with responsibility for things that were happening on the Harbor Management Commission for which the candidate had uh, taken no part. So there was a lively discussion, uh, as you can see here. Um, in the discussion before the vote, the, sh the chair noted that in light of the fact that uh, another nominee is scheduled to come before the RTM this year, as well as the possibility that the harbor management plan might come before the RTM early this fall, that the RTM might benefit and whoever is in the role of the RTM member, uh, ex officio member to the harbor management commission would certainly benefit from some sort of advanced direction with respect to the nature of reports that are pro provided to the RTM in the future. Um, that's an invitation to uh, other committees to, uh, uh, to provide suggestions in that respect. The vote was 631 to nominate Mr. Tebe for appointment to the role of RTM ex officio member. The dissenting votes from District 3, 4, and 5 each expressed a concern that the candidate did not present an objective report in the previous week, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, the abstaining vote from District 10 was meant to express that while he had previously been disinclined to cast a vote for the candidate, the candidate's acknowledgement that a wider range of pers perspectives could be both provided and helpful caused him to change his vote. So again, the, uh, uh, in the nomination process, the vote was 6-3-1 in favor of Mr. Tebe. Thank you. Peter Berg with the Land Use Committee Report. 
Good evening again. Um, I should preface this by uh, explaining that the Land Use Committee asked the moderator to assign Harbor Management Commission items to the Land Use Committee because um, because the land, I mean, uh, because the Harbor Management Commission uh, has um, uh, a great deal of control over or over um, uh, coastal management. So it's not just uh, it's not just boating. It's not just uh, um, parks and rec. Um, the Land Use Committee interviewed Mr. Mr. Tebby last Monday night, and all districts uh, were present. So although the Harbor Management Plan was formed, the Harbor Management Commission was formed about two years ago, Mr. Tebby has been serving as, as our RTM liaison only since last October. He's a 40-year resident of Greenwich. He is a boater, a heavy user of our marine facilities. He said his role is to report on the Commission's activities to the RTM. He has submitted, as Mr. Eddy just reported, he had submitted last month a, a written report to the Appointments Committee, which is now posted on the RTM website. He reported that the new draft harbor management plan has been sent to the state DEEP for a preliminary review. He predicted that the state will have a problem with this draft plan because a goal of the draft plan is to retain Greenwich's home rule. <clears throat> but he said the state has adopted new laws that make application of home rule obsolete. He doubted, therefore, that the approval process would be swift. Indeed, he felt it would be a long time before a harbor management plan is submitted uh, for our approval here in the RTM. An approved harbor management plan, however, is crucial to settle the issue of more mooring permits and fees and to allow continued dredging of different areas on the Greenwich coastline. Mr. Tebby uh, impressed members of the Land Use Committee with his candor, his willingness to continue to serve as our RTM liaison to the Harbor Management Commission. Our vote was 12-0-0. Thank you. Andrew Chapin, Chair of our Parks and Recreation Committee. We went with uh, Mr. Tebby last week. Um, he, as has been said, he is a long-term resident of Greenwich and a boater for many, many years. He does consider uh, Greenwich's waterfront and harbors to be one of the key points of making why it is great to be in Greenwich. Um, we had a long and frank conversation with Mr. Tebby where he described his point of view uh, the committee felt that he was a very measured and reasonable person, and he was one that, while he felt practically we're probably going to have to work better with the state in order to get things done, he's committed to working with the committee and to get uh, to help the process move forward. The Parks and Rec Committee voted 11 0 0. Thank you. Discussion on item 7. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards, item number seven, and proceed to pull your delegation. I have the results of the first two votes that we took. Um, the vote on the consent calendar items, those were items one, two, three, six, and eight. Those in favor, 142, opposed, zero, abstaining, three. The consent calendar items have carried. The combined items were items four and nine. Those in favor, 154. Opposed, zero. Abstaining, one. The combined calendar items have carried. That now brings us to item 10. John Toner, our selectman, with that resolution. Resolved that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed as an alternate member of the Planning and Zoning Commission for a term ending 331-17. Thank you. Will a member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item 10 has been moved and seconded. Peter Berg, chair of our Land Use Committee with the report on item number 10. Good evening once again. So we had uh, Mr. Yeski with us uh, last Monday night. 
Uh, he has been nominated to be an alternate member of the Planning and Zoning Commission for a term expiring in uh, 2017. He, uh, Mr. Yeski is a 42-year resident of Greenwich. He's retired from his position as Senior National Partner and Group Managing Partner Real Estate and Financial Services from Deloitte & Touche. Uh, he said he's at a point in his life where he's ready to give back. Planning and zoning seem like a good fit vis-a-vis uh, -vis his interests and expertise, even though he acknowledged he is neither a lawyer nor an architect. In preparation for his role, he has uh, carefully reviewed the plan of conservation and development. Uh, Harry Levine, delegate from District 11 and former chair of planning and zoning, called his attention to the fact that the plan of conservation and development is an advisory document and that the task of planning and zoning members was to ju judiciously apply actual zoning laws. Mr. Yeski replied that he felt he could perform these tasks impartially. Although he attended a number of, he's attended a number of planning and zoning hearings, Mr. Yeski admitted that his, the learning curve will be steep, uh, but he expected to make a contribution to the process as he gains expertise. A number of com committee members cautioned that the town was at a critical juncture in terms of projects becoming, coming before planning and zoning, and that this was perhaps not the best time for an, an inexperienced person to come on board, uh, even though he would be one of the three alternates. So our vote on Mr. Yeski was 8-3-1. District 4 and District 9 uh, felt he had uh, inadequate experience. District, uh, so uh, uh, District 12 noted he need more land use and environmental experience. District 7 abstained. Uh, so that was 8-3-1. Thank you. John Eddy with the Appointments Committee report. Uh, the only things I would add to Mr. Berg's report are that when asked about his vision for the town of Greenwich, um, Mr. Rieski said it would be, uh, as a member of the Planning Commission, his goal would be uh, for Greenwich to uh, manage development so that the town retained as much as possible its village feel. Um, he understands the pressures that development firms can exert upon a town, and he know says he knows how to uh, manage those pressures. And uh, he also serves on the Board of government, uh, Governors of the Urban Land Institute, and so brings with him access to the resources associated with that. The vote of the Appointments Committee was 10-0-1, with District 9 absent and District 1 abstaining. Thank you. Discussion on Item 10. Will the District Chairs please mark your voting cards, Item Number 10, and proceed to pull your delegation. Item 11 now comes before us. John Toner, or Selectman. Resolved that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed a regular member of the Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Agency for a term expiring 331-20, Jacob Schondorf. Thank you. Will the member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item 11 has been moved and seconded. Peter Berg with the land use report. Um, so the Land Use Committee uh, postponed uh, this uh, item until our June 26th, uh, 20, June, until the June meeting. Our, vo our vote on the postponement was 12 0, 0. All right. And um, Mr. Eddy, you have nothing to add. Is that? Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. So our, our Land Use Committee is offering a motion to postpone item 11 to our June meeting. That being offered on behalf of a committee does not require a second. I will call for a voice vote. All those in favor of postponing item 11 to our June meeting, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. That motion is carried. Item number 12 now comes before us. Peter Tessie, our, select, our first selectman. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. Item number 12, resolve that the preservation restrictions adopted by the Town of Greenwich, referred to as grantor, and in favor of the state of Connecticut, referred to as grantee, acting by the State Historical Preservation Office as an agency of the state of Connecticut is hereby adopted. Thank you. Will the member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item 12 has been moved and seconded. Doug Wells, chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee. 
Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Legislative and Rules Committee took this item up last Monday evening in a joint session with uh, Public Works and Land Use uh, in the Town Hall meeting room. Um, we had uh, um, arranged for this meeting uh, at the request of, of um, the advocate Chris uh, Franco from the Greenwich Point Conservancy as well as uh, Mr. Fox. Um, Mr. Fox um, uh, introduced the item for us, uh, explained uh, to us that this is, um, uh, the RTM is being asked to uh, adopt a, a resolution that will provide for a, uh, a restriction uh, on property at Greenwich Point known as the Old Barn, as well as the land around it. Um, Mr. Fox um, thought that there were some um, inadequacies in the document as it's been presented um, and um, thought that it would be more appropriate rather than bringing this item to the RTM at this point that he have uh, take a hand in working with the uh, state of Connecticut to try to address some concerns that uh, Mr. Fox has as well as other department heads um, in the town about uh, our obligations to keep and maintain this building perhaps rebuild it uh, at town expense and um, to address some other concerns that we have. Uh, I won't go in, into all those concerns. There was an excellent report, a memorandum written by Kip Bergweger that details a total of 10 uh, issues that um, uh, our town council as well as Mr. Franco had on this matter. Uh, the advocate, Mr. Franco, also agreed that this item was not ready for prime time, so to speak, and that we needed to bring this uh, back to the state to see if we could uh, negotiate uh, an agreement that uh, makes more sense for the town. Um, so uh, we spoke to Mr. Franco about the best way to proceed. He was willing to uh, withdraw the item, but um, I think after further discussion with the joint committees, we thought it better that the matter be referred uh, 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 back to a special committee comprised of one member from each of the four uh, committees that were considering this. Uh, and um, that uh, was done, legislative and rules was asked to take the lead on this to uh, prepare the motion at the appropriate time. I can um, uh, do just that. Thank you. Peter Berg with the Land Use Committee report. So um, as Mr. Wells just reported, this would be, we had a, a joint meeting of legislative rules, land use, um, um, and public works. And following the meeting, land use uh, voted 12-0-0 to support the legislative and rules motion to refer. Um, and if there is to be a, a committee here, our Vice Chair Michael Car Carter volunteered to represent land use committee on the joint committee. Thank you. Arlene Lamazo with the Public Works Committee report. I won't repeat much of what has been said. Uh, in reading the explanations for this, I was confused as to why we, would, we were engaged in this matter, because it didn't specify what Greenwich was going to get. But um, of course, after we went to the joint meeting, it was clear that the grant that they're going to give us is $500,000, and that would offset what the Conservancy spent to rebuild the old barn when it was destroyed by uh, Superstorm Standy. Uh, and that was more than $700,000. So you could see the 500,000 offsetting the seven was going to be definitely in the town's interest and in the conservancy's interest. Our vote was nine, one, zero. The negative vote with District Five, who just wanted an up-down vote now, saw no reason to uh, defer it. Uh, District 11 absent and District 10 was not present. Our committee appointed Phil Dodson, the secretary of our committee, to be the representative. Thank you. Thank you. And do we have a Parks and Recreation Committee report? All right, Mr. Wells. Um, our motion, uh, the Legislative and Rules Committee moves to refer item 12 to a special committee comprised of one member from the Land Use, Legislative and Rules, Public Works, and Parks and Recreation Committees to work with the Law Department to further negotiate the agreement with the State of Connecticut for presentation to the June call. Our vote to approve this motion was 11-0, District 10 absent, 
and our committee um, appointed Kip Bergweger as the uh, member from um, Legislative and Rules, and I understand that uh, Catherine Lobalbo has been appointed by Parks and Rec. So those are the four members of the special committee. All right. Thank you. That being offered on behalf of our committee does not require a second. Discussion on the motion to refer, item 12. All right, will the district chairs please mark your voting cards. I, uh, motion to refer item 12 to special committee and to proceed to poll your delegation. That being the, uh, assuming that uh, that passes, um, we will await the resolution of uh, the vote before proceeding to adjourn. I do have the results of the vote on item seven. This is the appointment of Horace Tebby to be an ex officio uh, member of the Harbor Management Commission. Those in favor, 151. Opposed, seven. Abstaining, six. Uh, that item has carried. I have the result of the vote on item 10, which is the appointment of Dennis Yeske to be an alternate member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Those in favor, 144. Opposed, 9. Abstaining, 10. That item has carried. All right, so we will await the resolution of this vote on the motion to refer. While we are waiting, Lucia Jansen, uh, Chair of our Budget Overview Committee. Good evening. I apologize. I was running late earlier. So in less than 30 days, this body will be voting on the BET's half a billion dollar proposed fiscal year 2016-17 town budget. The Budget Overview Committee has reviewed the proposed budget and identified some areas of concern that we want to bring to your attention so that you and your committees have the opportunity to further scrutinize the budget before the May RTM budget meeting. The BOC communicated its issues at the BET's public hearing on March 21st prior to their final budget vote. Some of the BOC items were addressed by the BET in their final budget, several were not. The BOC's framework for analyzing the town's budget is based on the BET's own fiscal year 1617 budget guidelines, which we unanimously supported. The BOC, in reviewing the BET budget against their guidelines, noted the following discrepancies. One, 10 departments exceeded the 2% spending limit. All right, excuse me, Ms. Jansen. Yes. I, we, I thought we had agreed you were just going to report what votes were taken by your committee. Okay, well I can, that's the context of the votes. We're not, I know, I'm, but we have, okay. we've had a whole discussion on this. I okay. Don't wanna... okay, so. In the operating budget, the BOC voted to request the BET to reduce 1.42 personnel in the Board of Education budget and to cut 324,000 to meet the 2% guide, guideline spending limit. The vote was 1100 for the former and the second vote was 542 since BOC members felt the BET was going to cut the Board of Ed excess on its own, which later they did not. The BOC also discussed the significant operating shortfall with Nathaniel Witherall. Just to be clear, the town is back paying 5.3 million out of the reserve fund balance for the past negative balances and funding an additional 2.1 million for the forecasted fiscal year. The BOC also has many questions and concerns around a verbal plan to increase revenue, hiring 9.1 new full-time equivalent personnel. The BOC took two votes. One was to request the Nathaniel Witherell for a written two to three page executive summary covering the business plan for the next two years for both long and short term care. The second vote was asking for a written revenue plan for the short term rehab program. The vote was 10-1-0 for the former and 11-0-0 for the latter. To date, we have received neither. On the capital side of the budget, the BOC has serious concern with several projects that appear to lack project readiness, beginning with the proposed Northwest Fire Station and staffing plan. The BOC has forwarded the RTM. Ms. Caldwell, please state your point of order. Well, 
You, you are correct. I, I, will, I will rule that your point of order is well taken. Ms. Jansen, this is something totally different than you and I had discussed. And our, but you know, you're talking about controversial issues that everyone should have a fair opportunity to be heard on. And you, you were just going to announce what you did and direct them to the website for information, as far as I understood. Which you, is what I can I'm hear. Doing. There are members who who now want to uh, be heard in response to what you're saying, and tonight is not the time to do that. Well, okay. So I will, I will rule that the point of order is well taken. I will take the floor away, so, and I will put it to the body. An appeal of the moderator's decision that tonight is not a night to discuss budget issues. Um, the, the question put to the body is, shall the ruling of the chair be sustained? In order to sustain that, uh, I'm sorry, in order to overrule the ruling, a majority no vote is required. So the question that we will put, I will ask the district chairs to take a record vote, shall the ruling of the chair be sustained? If you believe that tonight is not the night to get into budget discussions, you vote yes. If you want to, to hear budget debate, you vote no. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So th this is not debatable. The only question is, do you understand whether you want to vote yes, what a yes vote means and what a no vote means? I have ruled, uh, excuse me, do not, please, you must be recognized before you can call out and you need to stand up when you are recognized. I have ruled that we are not going to get into budget discussions at a meeting where there is no budget issue on the agenda. There are freedom of, of information issues. Uh, there is um, fairness to those who have an interest in these important issues. Uh, and so the
All right, we have the result of the vote on the appeal of the chair's ruling. Those in favor, 97, opposed, 60, abstaining, 5. The ruling of the chair has been sustained. There being no further business to come before the meeting, and this meeting stands adjourned upon unanimous consent. Thank you all for coming. Have a safe trip home. All right, we have the result of the vote on the appeal of the chair's ruling. Those in favor, 97, opposed, 60, abstaining, 5. The ruling of the chair has been sustained. There being no further business to come before the meeting, and this meeting stands adjourned upon unanimous consent. Thank you all for coming. Have a safe trip home.